Hi, I'm David Malloway, and this is for folks that are prototyping with electronics. Behind me, there's a video that's showing a mechanical engineering team using sensors and to power the stuff up, they've had to migrate from the benchtop to the floor because they completely ran out of space to set down these benchtop power supplies and do the circuitry just to get things powered on. And we can make this a whole lot better. I'm about to show you a whole hands-on tutorial start to finish for a very simple circuit to make that easier. Okay, this might be a little bit messy, but we're gonna use this to measure something about our PD trigger board. We're gonna build a gadget that makes 12 volts and five volts together, uh, both of them available at the same time. So the PD trigger will give us um, 12 volts or even 15, 20, et cetera. It's gonna output these on the screw terminal. We're gonna figure out where we can tap into that full voltage without messing with our screw terminals. And then we're going to uh, get access to that, and I'll show you how. So all I want to do is um, figure out where the 12 volt trace is involved. Do, do, do. Go in here. Well, I already <laughs> I already checked it previously, so um, all right. So this screw is always going to be common with the terminal itself. See, that's ground, this is positive. Ground we have here, and positive we have here. So we can use these vias. They're silver lined holes where you can tap in, uh, you could put anything you want in there, and that metal is gonna be continuous with the circuit voltage itself. See, plus, minus. Um, all right, okay, so my solid core wire. I'm using solid core so I get the rigidity, and I'm gonna, uh, solder it in to that via and then we're going to come down here and do the ground okay i'm just adjusting the position of this wire so it's clean uh, i had it already soldered and then i remelted it and hand just move this you want to do this quickly so that you don't um, melt the insulation like i did just a little bit okay now ground goes don't put too much solder. And we gotta wait until the board itself heats up. That one resisted just a little bit more because the ground has a large plane and that uh, dissipates heat across the copper around this board. Uh, and hopefully these didn't make contact with one another here. And I'll fiddle with this off camera and make sure that they're not gonna make contact. Maybe add some hot glue. Okay, these two leads are getting snipped, so we're not at risk of uh, making contact with something in the short circuit. And I've got my two wires clean enough, sticking out. Um, a lot of information on this board. Oh, you can lock it into one of the voltages just by adding a resistor on one of these. So much functionality this is only i think it's about eight dollars 16 bucks for two okay so i added a ruler for scale you've got these two that are mechanically held kind of together by the solid core of these two copper wires the insulation is there keeps them from contacting each other i stripped it down to the length that i need starting with um, this kit type of wires these are fairly useful, and when you're doing only a matter of small things, it's great to just snip some of these to the length that you need, and you get that rigidity. You can bend them fairly easily with needle nose, or even those, uh, the tweezers that I always use for soldering. All right, now um, this, what we have, uh, you're gonna hear the beep if I've got continuity, so this is the negative terminal, and this is my center pin. I, I have two pins coming up and the ground wraps around the bottom and just makes contact there. This is all quite fragile, so all we have to do is reinforce it. But this is how we get around, all right, it's still prototyping level. You're still working with what would otherwise be just a bunch of jumper wires and breadboards, etc. But this is, this is simpler as long as we can mechanically secure it. You can see we don't have the positive anywhere coming up, but we do have the positive down there where it enters the board. So if we set this to 12 volts, we should get 12 volts and ground coming into this five volt regulator board. The green board is about a $1 five volt regulator. 
it used to have the label HK something something. But the selection of this, these are reliable, cheap, plentiful types of gadgets that are um, all over. 10 of them for 10 bucks type of deal. Very, uh, very abundant now. You can choose any type. Um, and then I added the two header pins, so we should be able to measure our five volts here from the five at the extremity and zero uh, ground in the middle. So let's test that out. Okay, I've just plugged it in. Um, I don't know why it's blinking, but my PD is always available with uh, one or two cables at the soldering station. If I press it here, nine volts, blinking, blinking, 12 volts. I don't really like that blinking because I think that's a warning. Let's reset it, 12 volts, nice. Oh, it's only appearing to be blinking on the camera. In real life, it's solid blue. Um, so we can go up to 20 volts. Wonderful. Now let's measure that we have. I use my multimeter. First, I'm going to measure the 12 positive minus. And oops, I got to do the voltage function. DC volts, 12.18, beautiful. Now, uh, five volts after the regulator, 4.99, beautiful as well. And it's negative because I, oops, I, re I reversed my probes here. So, oh. I'm gonna make the cable for my uh, receiving end device for the five volt situation. Okay, now I pulled out from my DuPont supplies. Ground goes into the yeah. ground goes into the terminal with the arrow. Okay, and then try your best not to peel those apart. And the other side gets to have the three pin. That's because I need an extra position available in my um, yeah, I'm going to reverse these. They're going to be twisted. What I mean by that is if you drew a diagram, now you can see there's a twist in this wire. It's going to switch over. Just that's useful to think about if you're going to document your stuff. Okay, I removed one end and I added heat shrink. Be careful not to uh, melt your housing like I nearly did there. Um, but that's going to help give this some more rigidity. You, you can't pull one without pulling the other. This is just a mechanically a good practice if you're going to fiddle with this wire a lot. Okay, now you're looking at a piece of uni strut and a piece of cork material. Uh, we're going to measure that. We're Okay, we need 40 millimeters for the square. That's going to have this here. And a simple utility knife will do the job. You want to have this very, very sharp, and then you're going to get that nice, clean edge. Okay, this is a, an adhesive on one side that I'll peel off, and I'll stick that down, and we're going to protect, since this is steel, and we're going to stick our circuit to this, it's going to protect it from uh, short-circuiting under any vibrations, etc. See how if, if you're not careful, you get that crummy stuff. And that is um, okay, natural insulator, eighth inch thick adhesive backed cork material. I use this for loads of stuff. If you do mechanical things and creating stuff, it's just super handy. You'll see more in the coming videos. Just peeled off the backing. Now you can see the adhesive tape stuff. And I'll line it up and stick it. Apply some pressure. And then we're ready to put our circuit on there. Now we have this thing portable and uh, with weight. So it has the mass not to flip around and create a dangerous situation. Okay, hot glue gun's warming up. And since I'm multitasking, sometimes I like to bust out the hourglass. If there's two minutes, if I have anything, uh, if this is all gone and I walk past this, it's kind of a reminder like, hey, you probably left this on because 
when I store, when I unplug this, this goes away or at least gets tipped back over. Only two minutes to warm this up because my uh, hot glue gun has some mods inside. Um, it's got it's got extra fiberglass insulation wrapped around the heating thing in there. So when you touch this, where I'm touching right now, it's uh, don't mind my nails. I was just changing the brakes on my car. Um, <laughs> this is not nearly as warm as it used to be. That means more heat enters into the the heating channel where we want it and less heat exits out of the enclosure. So we've raised the efficiency of this at least 25%. It's pretty awesome. And it heats up twice as fast, five minutes or so down to two minutes. And if you're really multitasking, then it's good to just grab a piece of silicone and leave that in the same place as your glue gun. When it drips, no matter what surface, this will just peel easily, easily right off of the silicone. Um, and then also you can carry this off to the drawer where you're storing your hot glue because uh, then you can put it away hot and if it drips, no problem at all. Okay, the glue's flowing, so we're gonna apply some on the bottom of each of these. Making note to add a little bit of height to our assembly, that way the pins don't teeter-totter the boards out of the um, flat, plain, sort of. This is just an OCD seat thing type of thing for me, but I don't want to see the region of the board that has the pins on it um, just tipping up. It looks like there was no forethought. Um, okay. So now we have a weighted modular uh, dual voltage uh, supply. Okay, this circuit is useful for millions of possible projects. And uh, like one example that I'm gonna implement this in is uh, some of you may recognize stepper motor, stepper motor driver, breakout board. That's a fairly new thing on the market. And we have this, it's magnetic, so we can quickly clamp it on and get to work. Our five volts is available on these two pins, which is the two side-by-side -side DuPont style pins is what powers up loads and loads of microcontrollers as well as just accessory boards. So this is a communicating type of board. It's using five volts for its logic stuff and for its pulse, uh, pulse inputs, we can go ground down here at the base and red, the red row is five volts, all right? This um, light comes on indicating that it's ready to communicate, but we don't have voltage going to the motor itself. That's a separate thingy. Now, since we're doing prototyping, uh, I keep a bag with the last project's sets of wires, and it's always 18 gauge being used for powered mechatronic stuff. And it's always simple ferrules on the ends because the most common connector out of all powered uh, electronics for prototyping are gonna be these screw terminals. We use, oh, check it out, I just invented something new. I added, you can see there's a third wire in there. That's the solid copper that was remaining on the bench top. And I believe now that I've heat shrunk it, uh, it's still a little bit hot. We can take this arrangement and we can bend it 90 degrees uh, like so. And now you have something that conforms a little better just in case you wanted something like that. Okay, so this demo isn't gonna be ready yet because we still need a pulse up and down input to the motor driver to make this thing work. It's just an example for purpose use case for your dual voltage power supply. Um, plug that in. Now we have 12, uh, uh, we got a light here. Okay, I'm supposed to check that I cannot turn this because if we have power going to the coils, as soon as that's lit up, I wanna be able to get a uh, it'll be a static one position signal of the current that runs to the coils in here, and it's going to be held steady. steady. But there's um, the enable pin. Oh boy. As I was saying, there is a pin here on the yellow contact. That's the enable pin for the motor. It must be pulled down to ground to activate the current. 
to come in here and run to the motor. In any case, now we've got it fixed in place and it does not want to move. This circuit here is useful for a million things, as I said, for the Arduino or for an ESP32, ESP8266 uh, or Raspberry Pi. All of them have two pins available side by side to receive that five volts in ground. It's sufficient to deliver the current and evacuate the USB ports from here so that you can have a portable situation. Um, and also we can cycle through the different voltages Ooh. by pressing this button. We can go up to say 15 volts. It's blinking now because it's saying, I am being asked for more current than I can produce because these stepper motors are pretty current hungry. I have come back to the nine volt position and then we can also suddenly grab just a $10 device like this tester and we can gain information about the circuit that we're working with. So any actuator plus any microcontroller. Now you can power the system and you can measure up um, how much power are we drawing. Just because now we're powering from USB-C, we can see we're working with 8.96 volts and we're pulling, uh, uh, call it 0.1 amps. And that's really cool. Now I wonder if I play with this shaft. Oh, yeah, it climbs up when I start putting uh, force against that shaft. But in any case, I think that's a sufficient demo to say here's a useful circuit. And um, anyone in the audience that can show us how to build something cleaner and simpler with this much versatility, I would love to see it because we want to always improve. Thanks, everyone.